What's up, traders? Anthony Crudelli here, and welcome to this week's episode of Develop Your Edge. In today's show, I'm going to get into some detail about some tweets that I put out over the last week or so. And on my final thoughts, we'll hit the charts and talk about some of the things I'm seeing in the E-mini S&P and E-mini NASDAQ. But before we get to the tweets and the charts, this morning, got an announcement from CME Group. Got an email, and I saw it on social media, on Twitter, where CME, CME Group put out micro-sized options, we all knew they were coming, are now coming on August 31st. So we have a date. So you can go to either my Twitter stream, which I already retweeted CME Group's tweet, or their Twitter stream to find out uh, a link to this page and subscribe for updates. I think this is going to be huge for traders. I know a lot of my options friends are really excited about these micro e-mini options coming August 31st. Now, let's go over to this screen here where I have a tweet that I put out on July 7th. Sticking to a process as a trader sounds easy, but in drawdowns, we hesitate because we fear the result. This is tough to overcome, but once we give ourselves the mental freedom to let the results be what they are, then we can stick to a process. This is a mental challenge, not about process. Okay, well, we always talk about process on social media and on this show and how we have to develop a process, a strategy, and an edge as a trader. And developing the process is something that's an ongoing thing for us as traders. This is what we do. We're always working on our edge. We're always working on our process and working on our strategy. So in this tweet, what I talked about was sticking to a process. It sounds easy. And it's, I don't want to say it's easy to develop a process, but when we're developing our process, we're in just that clear state of mind where we're, we're at home or we're in a coffee shop or we're somewhere and we're jotting ideas down and just things that we want to put together for our process. And we're doing it for our best interest, of course. So it, it, it sounds easy when we're doing it to say, hey, when, when the market's open and we begin to trade, I can stick to it because that's the plan that we put together. But in drawdowns, we hesitate because we fear the result. I gotta tell you, this was so difficult for me. And I know for a lot of you probably as well. As traders, I don't care who you are, we go through drawdowns. And when you go through drawdowns, you start rethinking everything. You're like, is my process right? Is my process wrong? Uh, should I go back to the drawing board? What do I need to fix? And when we're at the screens, we're sitting there getting ready to click that button. And what happens? We fear the result. We're fearful that we're going to have another loser. And then we don't take that trade. And then that trade works. And then we take the next trade. And then that one doesn't. And now we're in a tailspin. How many times has this happened to me? Countless times. I'm sure it's happened to many of you as well. So I always say that it, it sounds easy to develop that process, and it is relatively easy to develop it, but it's, it's, and it, it's very difficult to execute it because you have to work on developing mental freedom to let the results be what they are. So when you're in that drawdown, I'm very visual, so how do I work on that? How do I fix that? When I'm in that drawdown, I come into every day and I, and I do a meditation and I think about it. I think about visually myself executing my strategy, going through my process, going through my entire routine. And if I come out of that meditation feeling strong about it, confident that if I, if I do run into a situation that I'm actually going to do it, then I continue to trade that day. And I just follow through with it. And you start training yourself and preparing yourself to be able to do that. I always believe that confidence comes from preparedness. So I prepare mentally for that. So it goes beyond just the process. I already have that in place, but now I'm preparing to execute it. Because if I'm struggling and we all go through drawdowns, that's when I'm going to be tested. And that's when you as a trader have to step up and say, you know what? I did my homework. I believe in what I'm doing. I'm prepared mentally. Here's my opportunity. I'm going to do it. That's why I say this is a mental challenge. It's not about the process. Next tweet. The strategy that is best for you as a trader is not the one that has the best stats. It's the one that you believe in. My reason is because it's easy to bail on a strategy when stats turn bad. But if you believe in a strategy, then you'll always find ways to execute it better. <laughs> Look at, I remember a time learning how to trade. I was surrounded by all these great traders, right? Everybody's making all this money and here's me struggling. I can't make any money. And I'm watching traders execute right next to me a strategy and make money. And then here's me doing the same thing and I'm losing. And I'm sure this has probably happened to some of you as well. And you say to yourself, 
How's this even possible? How's this person right here trading with this strategy that has great stats? They're making money, and I'm sitting over here losing. And the reason is, is because I didn't know what I was, I didn't know what I was doing at it because I didn't believe in it. I didn't understand everything about it. When you're looking to develop your strategy, you have to believe in it. Don't just look at the numbers and say, well, this, this strategy wins X amount of time. If it works so well, then probably automate it. But if you're going to be a discretionary trader like myself and, and many of us out there, you have to wholeheartedly believe in your process and your strategy because no matter what, in the bad times, you won't question it. You'll continue to find ways to get better. That's something that I, I, I think about all the time. I, mean, I look at my strategy and say, over time, my strategy on its own isn't going to give me the greatest results. Me as the executor of that strategy is what delivers better results. Why? Because I believe in it. It fits my personality. I'm trading into the markets that, that fit my personality. I'm trading into the markets that it works the best in because I believe in it. So I continue to work harder at getting better at executing it. A, a, a big part of trading is having that drive, that, that want to be better, right? If you have something that just has good stats, does not mean that you will have good stats. At least in my experience, that has been the case. That's why I say, believe in a strategy, then you'll always find ways to execute it better. That's something that I live by. Final tweak. The harder it takes to achieve something, the harder you'll work to sustain it and keep it because trading is so tough. And I've had it taken away from me so many times. That before is the reason why I became good at managing my risk. The market was my teacher for managing my risk. Now, I've had a lot of friends uh, that were mentors for me. I've, I've been around some of the greatest traders in the world coming up in this, in this business. And they're, they've taught me a lot of things. But managing my risk, which we talk about all the time on social media and on this show and a lot of shows talk about this. We always talk about managing your risk, and it, it's one of those things that going back to kind of what I said earlier, it sounds easy on paper, but until we make the mistake of losing more than we should, we almost never learn this lesson. I look back at my career, and I remember really just continuing to trade well and doing well, and thinking I was finally making it, and then boom, all of a sudden I'd give it all back, and then when I was right near the last little bit of money in my account. It was almost like I had implode and just give all the money back to the market and then I have to borrow money or get money to go, go back and trade again. And until I got so sick of that, it didn't matter how many people told me, every mentor, everybody that was around me saying, you need to manage your risk, you need to do this. Until the market taught me enough lessons where it was slapping the back of my hand at those times and just having that pit in my stomach when I would leave and be like, why am I doing this to myself? Because you're really doing it to yourself. If you're not managing your risk, you're cheating from yourself, you're stealing from yourself. You don't learn that lesson. That's why I say the market to me is always going to be the best teacher really for everything. You're going to learn a lot from other people and rightfully so. I think that's, you, that's how we help other traders get better. I try to help other traders, other traders help me. It's, it's a great community. But some things, a lot of things, the market has to teach you. You learn this through experience. So when you're sitting there and you're trading and a lot of you have probably gone through some struggles where you've given the market more than you've wanted to, remember that. Keep that close to you. If you keep that close to you, which I do every single day, that is what makes me a good risk manager because I am not going to let what happened to me in the past happen to me again. Now, sometimes I may lose a little bit more than I wanted to, but for the most part, I'm staying within my risk. And I know when I start doing things that, that I'm not really happy with, with myself, and I, and I notice it in those moments, I change it and I fix it right there. I don't let it get any worse because I've been taught the lesson by the market. Every time we leave, that bad feeling that I should have stopped and I didn't. And I think that's just growth as traders. That's something that we learn over time. That's something that we learn with experience. And the market to me is the best teacher for managing your risk. All right, traders, I'll be back in 30 seconds with my final thoughts. 24-7 access to diverse global markets. Right here. That's why I added stock index futures to my trading strategy. Now when I see ups and downs coming, I'm ready. Well played. Why trade with TradeStation? It's innovative. 
easy to use, and totally freaking sweet. With powerful tools to track and execute your trades and low per trade commissions on stocks, futures, and options. Upgrade your trade at tradestation.com. All right, traders, final thoughts for today. I want to talk about some of the things that we're hearing about the E-mini NASDAQ right now. I saw a tweet actually that said the NASDAQ was up 2%, made an all-time high, then closed down more than 1%. It's only happened two times before, and the last time was March of, of 2000. And we all know what happened in March of 2000. Uh, the NASDAQ went down for quite a bit of time. So let's go over to the charts, pulled up the NASDAQ on the daily. And, and the reason why I bring that up is because I think that so many traders specifically new traders when they hear things like that subconsciously they could screw with them because they think oh is this the top is it going to be like 2000 again and i always look at it like like this is that it, it, it's interesting to me but is it going to help me make money is it going to help me with my edge probably not sometimes they do and and how do they you know how does something like that actually help us as traders because i think that it's so easy to get distracted out there with everything in social media and TV and everyone's talking about well, you know, the markets and then they're, they're looking for comparisons to 2008, 2000, all these different times. And, and every time is always different. And I know history may rhyme and price does rhyme a lot of the times, but we have to be able to use it, that type of information. And you need to be strong enough mentally to be able to, to block out a lot of that stuff. But when stuff like that sometimes comes out, it actually may work. You have to be able to use it within your strategy. So I pulled up my NASDAQ chart. And I'm not trading the NASDAQ, but I'm watching it closely because I think it's important. So we see this, this big move in the NASDAQ. And what are, what are the things that I talk about in this show all the time? When the market's going in one direction and the Bollinger Bands are open, right? The bottom one is actually starting to come back in, but the top one's still pointing up. This market to me is a one-way market. I am not looking or interested at all in shorting the NASDAQ right now. I don't care what stat I get. but if that high holds, like we talked about with that stat that came out, uh, we get maybe a sell signal or I get some, some things interesting in here on my strategy that the market then proves to me through my lens, through my strategy, then maybe I look at it and go, huh, you got this confirmation here, you've got this. Maybe then I can utilize something like that. And, and the point I just wanted to make is, is that take all this information you have out there and you have to really kind of be able to dissect it and you have to be able to look at it and, and block a lot of it. And, and the stuff that actually works with your strategy, maybe it could be a good confirmation. Maybe it could be a good contradiction. That's how you use that stuff to develop an edge. So it really just does, it, it just takes that mental strength to be able to block out some things and take other things in and to be able to put them in, in, into your world and see if they make sense in your trading. Now, I want to talk about the E-mini S&P. And what I see there, as you know, I've got my beacon indicator up right now. Uh, like I mentioned many times before, you can go to anthonycredelli.com and download it on the in, under the indicators tab. And what do I see here in the E-mini S&P? We saw the NASDAQ chart looks really completely different, right? And we look at the E-mini S&P, and I just only have a certain amount of time going back right now on my daily chart here on TradeStation, only going back a little bit of time because I really want to be able to see I do that a lot because I want to be able to see where we are within my strategy only for a short period of time. I don't need to see all that back data. I'm really focused on the now right now. And the Bollinger Bands are just, they're, they're really telling me we're boxed in. And you look at the way that they're trading around my support and resistance areas. And, you know, I've talked about this in previous episodes. I'll click on the pink line right here that comes in at 3168-ish. Yeah, we had a daily close above it. We closed back below it. We're kind of chopping around it really just looks range bound to me. I actually put a tweet about, out about this the other day and I said, not every market needs to be labeled as bullish or bearish. A lot of times markets just, could just be sideways and that can be an edge. Right now to me, my edge, when I look at the S&P is trade both sides. When it gets near resistance and if it's respecting it, like today we're holding a little bit above it uh, on the daily, I'm not really super interested in being short today. Um, but if we skip back below it and I get confirmations on my short term, I'll trade it. If we go down and we get near support, which has been 3097 for me now, I'm interested in being long. So I look for short-term charts to be able to, to support that and help me execute those trades. You don't need to find a bull and bear market to make money. If your strategy is telling you that it is in a sideways range, which is what it's been telling me in the E-mini S&P, so I've been looking at both sides. 
Still a little bit more looking at the long side because of everything I've talked about in this show with, with everything that's happening with the Fed. I still believe that the market is probably getting ready to continue to go higher. Of course, it'd have to prove it to me, but from everything we see with the Fed and even through the technicals, still more aggressive on the long side. But for now, we're range bound. And one last thing I want to talk about HYG, which I've talked about a bunch of times on the show. And I always say, look at your correlating market. I've spoken about how since the Fed is buying corporate bonds, junk bonds, you want to watch it. So HYG is something I keep up a lot. And I look at that 8281 right now is resistance for me. And I look at the way it's acting around it. It can't get above it. This confirms to me we're in sideways range bound in the S&P. The S&P probably got pulled a little bit higher because the Nasdaq's exploded and HYG has not really put, pulled through uh, their resistance yet. But if I start to see 8281 daily closes in the HYG above it, daily closes above 3168 in the S&P, I think, you know, especially if that Bollinger Band starts going up on the daily, I think we keep going up. Until then, range bound type trade. So once again, everybody, it's not just about looking for these big trends, these big moves or calling tops or all these different things. It's about taking the information that we have out there, looking at the bull side, looking at the bear side and dissecting that data and putting it through our strategy to see how we can get an edge in our everyday trading. Now remember traders, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at Anthony Crudelli. And be, to sh be sure to check out Instagram. I've been putting a lot of different stuff on there. And that's at Anthony C. Crudelli. That's a wrap for today, traders. See you next week.